Things you do wrong every day. Hello there, YouTube. So basically, we do a lot of things automatically on a daily basis, which is purely out of habit. Keep moving. Keep moving. Most times, we don't even bother to find out if there's a better or more efficient method. Today, we're going to be talking about those habits and learning the best way to carry out everyday tasks. These honestly could range from holding a drink, to walking properly, or having good posture. If you're new to this channel and if you have not subscribed to our list, I urge you to do so now by clicking that subscribe button as we give you things you do wrong every single day. Our first tip is holding a drink. The first one actually applies to any drink that comes in either a glass or a bottle. You would be shocked to find out that this whole time you've been holding your drink, well, let's say for a beer, for example, by its body. Which totally makes sense, am I right? Especially since it's most comfortable and it's how you have always seen others do it. However, that is not the right way to hold a drink. Our hands conduct heat, therefore they affect the temperature of the beer, warming it much quicker than if you were holding the bottle by the neck, which is exactly what you are really supposed to do. A similar rule exists for when you hold a glass of wine. The best bet is to hold the glass by the stem, or flute as it's officially called. As for regular glasses like a shot glass, or even just a regular soda glass, well I'm sorry, we're just gonna have to deal with warm drinks. Our next tip is untying knots. Tell me, how many times do you try to untie something? A million times and it just doesn't seem to get any better? Some people string the handle of a garbage bag or anything else that knots only to end up making the knot even more tight and totally unmanageable. Well, luckily for you, there is an easier way. Instead of pinching the actual bond and frustrating yourself until everyone thinks you're a crazy person, take two ends of the tie and twist it as much as possible. Then simply pull the twist apart in your hand away from the knot. Do it a number of times so it loosens out. If all else fails you, a corkscrew can actually be a tool for untwisting tough knots like shoelaces. Make sure while you're doing any of these that you take it as much weight off the tied part as possible. If it's a bag of garbage, for instance, lift the bag off the floor and take pressure off the knots. All of this will make knots more manageable. Don't worry if you don't get it the first time. I know I'm still having trouble with the 76th time. Our next tip is holding a banana. Now this one is a surprising fact that people don't know, especially because bananas are actually really common. Most people open bananas from the stem, and while it might go really smoothly for them, more often than not you'll probably end up in a struggle with it, or end up mushing or bruising it and making it all gross. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever watched a monkey open a banana, they don't pull on the top stem. Monkeys actually turn the banana upside down and open it. The trick is to actually open the banana from the opposite end of what your instincts tell you. Simply pinch the bottom end of the banana where the hard bit is, make a quarter turn, and pull back the skin away. It's much easier. Do this if you want an even result while looking like a person who actually knows their fruit. And isn't that the respect you've always wanted? Our next tip is brushing your teeth. Everybody always wants comments about how clean their teeth look. From those pearly whites to those shiny molars to my shiny teeth and me. Especially if they're just so white. You might be surprised to learn that up until this video, I too was brushing my teeth all wrong, just like you were. Now, we brush every day to maintain healthy teeth, but there is still a proper way of doing it so that many people are aware of. The first thing that you might not realize is that you're probably using way too much toothpaste. You only take a small dab to get your chompers clean, like about the size of a small pea. Secondly, and most commonly, you're probably brushing way too hard. A lot of people may think that the harder you scrub, the more stuff you get out of your teeth. However, the ideology actually makes us wear away tooth enamel and that is definitely not good, so brush softer. Also, never rush brushing. Taking 30 seconds per quadrant of about 2 minutes is ideal. Our next tip is sleeping. Now this one might be a little hard to understand, especially since most of you think your masters are sleeping. You can do it in your sleep. Either way, do you ever wake up and still feel so tired even though you know you got a whole night's sleep? Well, the problem is likely not the number of hours that you get every day, but instead it means you're just going about it, well, you guessed right, wrong. First, the best position to sleep is actually on your back, or on your left side with one pillow under your knees, or if that is uncomfortable for you, try lying on your side with a pillow between your legs so that your spine can stay aligned. Secondly, keep a specific bedtime that will help your body learn when to shut down for the night and when to wake back up. Mine is anywhere from midnight to when I need to wake up for work because I'm too tired to get up. Now, if you're between 18 to 64 years old, it is healthy to get around 7 to 9 hours of sleep. Believe it or not, the younger you are, the more sleep you need. 
Also, try to eliminate having light on in the room as much as possible. And no matter how tempting it is, don't watch TV before bed or any other type of screen. If you must, put it on night mode. The blue light that is emitted from these devices actually messes up your sleep patterns. So try to expose yourself to warm, dim lights before bed. It'll help you have sweet dreams. Our next tip is cooling a bottled drink. Now let's imagine it's a hot day and there's nothing cold to drink. Instinct makes most people just throw some bottles of beer or soda into the freezer and wait, and wait and wait some more. This is actually a huge waste of time. Of course, there is a better way to get it cooler faster. Whether you believe it or not, the method actually involves paper towels. Get some wet paper towels, wrap them around the bottle that you need to cool, and then pop it in the freezer. Doing this will cool your drink in less than 15 minutes. Compare that to half an hour or more without the towels. Our next tip is wearing earbuds. Although the world seems to be totally going wireless, there are still many people who prefer wired earbuds, mainly because, well, they're a little cheaper. And guess what? Chances are you've been wearing them incorrectly this whole time. You may have bought a pair only to realize that they don't fit in your ears like they're supposed to, or they just keep falling out, so you stuff them deep in there to keep them in place. Well, I'm guessing you wear them the same way that most people do, straight up into your ears. Actually, that's not right. The best way to actually keep earbuds in your ear is to loop them from behind your ear and down so that part of the cord actually runs over your ear. Now it may seem odd at first if you've never tried it, but this method will stop the cords from being pulled out of your ear even when they sway too much or get snagged on something. As odd as it feels, trust me, the joy that you'll feel from being able to run or go about your daily life without them falling out is definitely worth it. Our next tip is microwaving. We've probably all used the microwave more than once to heat up previous dinner leftovers, but as you may have guessed, there's a good chance that you may have also been doing it wrong this entire time. Funny how there's a whole lot of these things we don't know. Although it seems like microwaves unevenly heat up food inside them with the middle kind of warm and the others kind of crispy or cold. However, they can actually cook food pretty evenly. The thing is, they can't properly do it if you just shove food in a huge pile and in the middle of the plate. Instead, try to spread food around the rim of the plate in the shape of a donut. As weird as it sounds, it'll help heat everything evenly. The microwaves pass through all the food. It's also a good idea to put leftovers in for just one minute intervals, stirring in between to get an even exposure. In addition to this, when microwaving dry foods, try putting a cup of water in proximity with it. Since microwaves target water and dry foods obviously have very little water, it'll make the food moister. Finally, if you desire to cook faster and need to put more than one bowl in the microwave, put one of them on the side and the other one on a mug next to it. Two for the price of one. Our next tip is cooking perfect spaghetti. Sorry to say this, but Mama may have probably taught you wrong. You've probably made this easy to cook dish more times than you can actually count, but I wonder how many times you made spaghetti properly. Now, I'm not here to mess with your family recipe. I know that would just give me a butt whooping. Instead, I'm gonna tell you about some tricks that can make you follow that same recipe easier. First of all, it's best to cook pasta in a large pot. I'll tell you why. Too many people wonder why they always get a ball of noodles instead of a nice plate of them. The size of the pot is why. You see, spaghetti needs space to move around while it expands and softens. Use cold water so as to avoid having dissolved food. If you've ever had a disaster with a boiling over pot, you don't need to fear anymore. Here's another quick fix. Put a wooden spoon flat across the top of the pot to stop any bubbles from escaping. Finally, if you have ever wondered what that hole in that handle of your saucepan is for, well, I'm happy to tell you it's actually meant to hold your spoon so that it does not make a mess on the counter. Now you get to enjoy your noodles and less messy kitchens. Thank me later. All right, I saved the best for last, but first I have a quick challenge that only takes five seconds to complete. So if you can leave a like and subscribe within the next five seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just give it a try, it really works. Pooping. You may actually want to sit down for this one, cause it's a big one. In simple terms, you're pooping wrong. Yeah, I, I know, this is a hard one to believe. And now before you shake your head, ask yourself, if you're like most people that just sit perfectly on the ring of the toilet seat to do your business, I'm happy to inform you that your position is not ideal. Our bodies are actually designed to do number two while squatting. Before the invention of the toilet, people went essentially by hugging their knees the way that you would if you had to go in the first. Believe it or not, you actually need to place your feet on a stool with your knees higher while going. This is also to position your colon properly. Now, not only will this natural stance make the movement faster and easier, but it'll also help prevent colon disease and hemorrhoids. So, for lack of an easier way to say this in a family-friendly way, stop straining your papa squats and let old natural gravity do all the work for you instead. 
And that was our video for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed learning about these life hacks. Did we leave out any important details? Let us know what you think, and make sure you give us a thumbs up. See you, everybody.